I've spent the last month testing two new products from ASUS, the ROG Harp Mini and the ROG Falchion HFX, their new Hall Effect Rapid Trigger Keyboard. Both products are impressive on paper with top of the line specs, but my experience using them has raised some questions about where ASUS really stands as a company when it comes to their peripherals. So. Let's start with the Harp Mini, because I enjoyed using it a ton. And as for the Falchion, well, we'll get to that in a minute. The Harp Mini is a small, ambidextrous mouse with a shape very reminiscent of something like the Atlantis Mini. If you are coming from something like a GPX, this is going to feel quite a bit smaller. It's using optical mouse switches, which I think are probably Ratia Opticals, and it weighs just 49 grams. And they say it's capable of 8K polling, but there is no high polling dongle included, and I couldn't even figure out where to buy the one that Asus offers, so for all intents and purposes, I would say this is a 1K polling rate mouse. This isn't an issue for me, but if you need bigger numbers, you may need to shell out some extra money because as far as I can tell, this product doesn't exist. The Heart Mini does allow you to customize almost everything with either a combination of button presses or using the controls on the bottom, which is great because the alternative is using Armory Crate. And well, I have a whole section coming up on that experience, so stay tuned for that. The Harp Ace Mini, though, really is well built. I have put in over 100 hours on this thing, and there are no rattles, no creaking, and it is very solid. So great job, Asus. The coating feels like, well, plastic, but I haven't had any issues with it slipping out of my hand, so no complaints there. This might be because of the embossed grooves on the side of the mouse, and these have been a little bit controversial, but I really like them. They give a nice, consistent place to put my fingers, and really is one of my favorite things about the design. I have no complaints at all when it comes to the clicks, the side buttons, or the scroll wheel. All of these are top tier in both feel and function. Sharp, tactile, and overall, just great. So the mouse is good, but what about the keyboard? Well, the Felsian actually has a lot of very interesting features, and it is a breath of fresh air to see some true innovation when it comes to a keyboard. That said, using this keyboard has been really frustrating. So let's take a look at the features, and then I'll go over the issues. The board is a full plastic body and is using the ASUS ROG Hall Effect switches, double shot PBT keycaps. It has three angles of adjustment with the flip up feet on the bottom. And compared to the Harp Mini we just looked at, it definitely has a more aggressive gamer aesthetic. It supports all of the standard Hall Effect features that you would expect at this point, like Rapid Trigger and SOCD, which ASUS calls Speed Tap. But out of the box, the Rapid Trigger though only affects the WASD keys. So this is something that you're going to have to customize. And the Speed Tap feature seems to be turned on by default, which being that this has been banned by Valve as cheating, it seems like maybe Asus should have this turned off in the default configuration. Along the top of the keyboard here are two USB ports, and these allow you to connect two separate computers to the keyboard and then toggle between them with this little switch right here. Actually pretty useful if you are running a dual PC setup for streaming or if you work from home and you don't have access to a KVM switch. Also along the top is a toggle to turn rapid trigger on and off by just flipping this little switch here. In practice, I don't ever really feel the need to turn rapid trigger off. It doesn't impact my typing experience, and generally it makes the keyboard feel more responsive, so I just leave this on. The real star of the show from a design perspective with this keyboard though is the touch bar. This can have multiple functions that can be toggled with a small button on the top left, and it allows you to customize it to do things like media control, adjust the actuation point, or change RGB brightness. Now the coolest of these is definitely the actuation point adjustment, which lets you change the depth at which the keys on the keyboard actually register your input. And you do that just by sliding your finger along this top bar. So the Falchion keyboard is feature complete and has some really new and innovative hardware, but this all comes with a catch. And well, let's just say I've had some issues. The biggest and most consistent of these issues is where I had inputs not deactivate when the keys were released. Now, I'm not sure if this is because of the firmware or something in the software, but I had this multiple times where I was strafing side to side in game 
and the keyboard just continued to move in the wrong direction, almost like I still had the key pressed down. I've also had issues where the keyboard is stuck in function lock mode, but had no indication that this was on, while other times some keys, like my escape key, just simply stopped working until I reset the keyboard back to factory defaults. Windows lock seems to randomly turn itself on, deactivating my Windows key, which I use quite often, and again, there's no indication on the keyboard that this is on, and you just have to go in and remember the key combination to disable it. Now, most of these issues likely can be solved with a firmware update, but the out of the box experience has been super frustrating. The touch bar, the multi-device support, the rapid trigger toggle are all genuinely new and innovative features. And when the keyboard is working, it's actually pretty great but it feels like many of these features in here are added specifically to address the major issue, which is the fact that Armory Crate, Asus's software, is kind of a disaster. So let's talk about it. Many companies like Wooting, Nufi, and Lamzu have started to offer web-based versions of their software. They are no frills and straight to the point. Armory Crate takes a slightly different approach. It is overly cluttered, has frequent pop-ups displaying offers and promotions, and installs no less than seven services onto your machine. To top it off, the install itself took nearly 10 minutes. Now, this wouldn't be the end of the world because like most peripherals, you can set them up with the software and then uninstall it. But since I've had so many issues with the keyboard, it necessitated that I keep Armory Crate installed on my machine so that I could make changes to the board every time I needed to reset it. For some, this might not be a deal breaker, but it is a storm cloud that hangs over every Asus peripheral at this point. I actually love a lot of Asus products. I am currently using their $1,300 PG32 UCDP as my main display. This Harp Ace Mini was awesome. And in the past, I've used their graphics cards, motherboard, and other products in many of my builds, but they need to fix their software experience because it really is a major detractor. And not only does it get in the way of a good experience, but I think it actively contributes to some of the various issues that I experienced while testing this keyboard. The Harpace Mini is coming in at $130 and the Falchion HFX comes in at $200. Asus is a premium brand, but if you're going to charge a premium price, I think you have to deliver a premium experience. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.